This video is to help you with comparing the mean and the median and how to find the mean and the median. So here's an example of 10 math assignments that re Nicole received. What is Nicole's median score? So the steps to calculating the median, first you want to put them in order from smallest to greatest and make sure that you get all of the scores. So I'm going to scan for the smallest values, 76, 78 are my smallest values. So I want to write them in order from least to greatest. I'm going to mark off once I've used them. And then when we go into the 80s, I see 82, 84, 85, 80, 100. I want to count to make sure that I have all 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I listed all 10 in order from least to greatest. Now to find the median, median is middle. I can start off by crossing off one on each side. So the lowest and the highest. Then the next lowest and the next highest. Then the next ones. Then the next pair until I'm left with either one in the middle, which if I cross these off, I will not be left with one in the middle because I have an even number of numbers. So I'm left with two in the middle. When you're left with two numbers in the middle, you want to average those two numbers, which means add and divide by how many you have. So 88, plus 90 is 178 divided by 2 is 89. So the median score here is 89. The median is different than the mean. The median represents the middle set of the data where 50% of the numbers are greater than the median and 50% of the numbers are lower than the median. The mean is different because you're representing all of the numbers when you add and divide by how many you have. Another concept that we want to understand is what is an outlier? An outlier is a number that lies far away from the majority of the numbers. So let's look. When we look at this first set of numbers, we've got all of our numbers in the 90s and 100s, low 100s, 103, 104, 107, 109. These are all pretty close together. When we look at the second data set, 130, 30, 130, 99, 130, 130, 140. These are all in the 130s and a 140, except for 99. 99 is pretty far away from all of these other numbers, so 99 would be considered an outlier. When we look at this data set, do you see a number that is really far away from all the other numbers? It's kind of out there all by itself, far away from the rest of the data set. So these are all in the 100 or 110, 100 to 120 range, except that number right there, that would be considered an outlier. Now, what if you look at this last data set? Is there a number that is further away from all the other numbers? These are all between 140 and 151, except that number right there 
the three numbers I've highlighted would be called outliers. So it's only this first data set that all falls between 91 and 107 that does not contain any outliers. Outliers greatly affect the mean. They greatly impact the mean. So when you have an outlier, the mean is not a good representation of the data because you can think about your test scores. Let's say you had test scores all in 91, 95, and 88, and then you take a test and you get a 40. Well, the average or the mean of the first three test scores, I would add and divide by three. So the mean here would be about 91.3. Well, when I include all four of these test scores, add all four numbers, and divide by four, my mean is now 78.5. So because of this outlier, my mean drops significantly lower than three of my four test scores. So you can see how an outlier, this would be considered an outlier, not a score that falls in the normal range of scores that you have, greatly impacts the mean. How is the median affected by the outlier? So here you have two separate sets, one with an outlier and one without an outlier. So we can tell by looking at this second set, which number is the outlier? 81, because all the other numbers are in their teens or 20s, so 81 is the outlier. Let's find the mean for each set. So I'm going to cross off the lowest and the highest, then another pair, and I'm left with a median of 22, finding the median. And then do the same thing for the next problem. Cross off the lowest and the highest. Lowest and the highest again. When there are two left in the middle, find the average. So that's 48 divided by 2, which is 24. So because we're not finding the mean, we're just finding the middle number, we don't have a great difference in the medians. It's slightly higher, but it's not greatly higher. This one had a median of 22. This one has a median of 24. Those are not that different. It's slightly impacted and it's slightly greater, but it's not a lot different. Okay, let's look at one more example. And again, here we're talking about which measure of center, and a measure of center is either a mean or a median. Those are our measures of center. Should Mr. Malloy use for Amo and Javier for the best possible grade? So let's calculate the mean and the median and see which grade you would prefer someone to use. So look first here at Amos scores. Do you see an outlier? Yes. So our lowest score is 55, then 89, then 90, 
92 and 97. So when we look at that, we can tell that 55, that was just not a good day for Amo. He did not do well on that test, but he usually scores very well on his test. So we can calculate the mean and the median. To calculate the mean, add them all up and divide by how many you have. So 55 plus 89 plus 90 plus 92 plus 97 and then divide by 5. The mean is 84.6 and 84.6 is lower than 4 of his 5 scores because this 55 is really bringing him down. Now let's find the median. We're going to cross out the lowest and the highest, cross out another pair. What's left in the middle is 90. 90 is a better representation of what his grades usually are than the mean because here we had an outlier and an outlier greatly affects the mean. Now we can do the same thing for Javier's scores. List them in order from least to greatest. So 65, 65, 68, 92, 97. So we see differences here, but there's similarities in the first three and there's similarities in the last two. So there's not just one number that really stands out. So I'm going to find the mean first by adding those five numbers, dividing by five. So the mean for Javier is 77.4. And if we find the median, we would cross out the lowest and the highest, do that again, and we would be left with a median of 68. So Javier did not have an outlier. And which grade would Javier prefer to use to get the best possible grade after five scores? Well, if it were me, I would prefer someone describe my grade with the mean because these higher grades are bringing up the lower grades. So even though he didn't have any grades in the 70s, because you're averaging them all, they all are equal distant from, or they all average to have a distance, an average distance from that 77.4. Whereas Amos mean was greatly affected by his outlier, so I would use the median for that. So your hint here is to use the median if there is an outlier or if the data is skewed one way or another. Hope that helps. Thank you.